My idea is that we should be funding medical abortion worldwide, even in countries where abortion is illegal. So just to give a bit of context, first of all, there are currently 125 countries in the world where abortion is either illegal or severely restricted to the point where it may as well be illegal for most people who need one. And what that means is around 42% of women in the world live in one of these countries where they cannot access abortion legally. This is something that's been made infinitely worse by a policy that's known as the Global Gag Rule, also known as the Mexico City Policy. So this is a policy first introduced by the Ro Ronald Reagan's administration, brought back, kind of um, rejuvenated by uh, Donald Trump quite recently. And essentially what this means is that it's a complete ban on US federal funding being used to support any organization that's seen as promoting abortion. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be providing abortions itself. It could be just be providing referrals, or it could just even be giving information or advice about where to get an abortion, hence the global gag rule. Something else that also shocks people when I tell them this is that abortion is technically still a crime here in the UK. I'm not just talking about Northern Ireland, where abortion is almost always illegal, but in the rest of the UK as well, there are still criminal, san criminal sanctions associated with abortion. Technically, really, what, what happened is that abortion has been legalised in a narrow range of circumstances which are very tightly medically controlled. You technically could still go to jail for self-administering an abortion, even though this is uh, extremely rare still. So, I know one of the themes today is the Sustainable Development Goals. So, to put things in context of that, now, the Sustainable Development Goals don't really talk about abortion much. There's a brief line in there about unsafe abortion, um, but there isn't any mention of such a thing as a right to have an abortion or a right to choose. What the Sustainable Development Goals talk about instead is a vaguer and maybe slightly euphemistic term, reproductive rights. So in doing this, the Sustainable Development Goals have taken their cue from the Programme of Action produced by the International Conference on Population and Development in 1994. So the, this Programme of Action, it was a big step forward in some senses in terms of recognising um, the impact that unsafe abortion has around the world. So, you know, unsafe abortion is a big part of the document's aims. It does recognise the terrible detrimental impact it can have on women's lives and well-being, and particular as a contributor to maternal mortality rates. So unsafe abortion, especially in countries where abortion is illegal, is a huge contributor to deaths of pregnant women. However, the document kind of stops there. Again, abortion was quite controversial in the negotiations over this program of action. Um, so what you end up really with is a, is a document that doesn't talk about abortion as a right. It doesn't talk about there being a need to access safe abortion services, really. Instead, what you end up with is, to be honest, a little bit of a fudge. So to quote from the document itself, it says, in no case should abortion be promoted as a method of family planning. All governments and relevant intergovernmental and non-governmental organizations are urged to strengthen their commitment to women's health to deal with the health impact of unsafe abortion as a major public health concern, and to reduce the recourse to abortion through expanded and improved family planning services. Prevention of unwanted pregnancies must always be given the highest priority, and every attempt should be made to eliminate the need for abortion. So to put it simply, the idea is, if you expand access to contraceptive services, if you improve sexual education, the idea is that's better than needing an abortion. And of course, on the face of it, that sounds completely reasonable. Of course, it's always better to use contraception, to not have an unwanted pregnancy, than to have an unwanted pregnancy and need to have an abortion. However, what I want to suggest is that this idea of eliminating the need for abortion is extremely unrealistic. And this is a major failing of this uh, program of action. So first of all, it's unrealistic because it doesn't attend to the realities of many women's lives. It is simply the case in a lot of parts of the world that women are not able to access contraception, or they're not able to insist that contraception is used, or they're not able to access the kind of sexual education they need in order to make an informed decision 
about whether to get pregnant in the first place. So for those women, the idea that we can just eliminate their need for abortion is a little bit naive. However, I would go further than that personally and say that even in a perfect utopian world where we can all access the contraception we need, where we all have great education about what causes pregnancy, we all have great consent-based education, what I would argue would be even in such a world abortion is going to be a fact of life. Partially that's because no method of contraception is 100% effective, but it's also because we just make mistakes. We're human. It's not possible to program humans to be perfect contraception using machines. It is going to always be the case that unwanted pregnancies will occur and people will want and need to have abortions. So this idea that we can just improve contraceptive services, sexual health services, etc., and therefore eliminate the need for abortion is highly naive. So, what's the alternative? Well, the first thing to say is that abortion has changed pretty dramatically since uh, this conference happened in 1994. It is no longer the case that an abortion that takes place without medical supervision, so without the assistance of a doctor, is not necessarily always going to be an unsafe abortion. And this is largely due to the vastly expanded use of what's known as medication abortion or medical abortion. So these are abortions um, which usually involve taking two different medications, so mifepristone and misoprostol. These could be taken in about the first nine weeks of pregnancy to induce an abortion. It is completely safe, it is extremely effective, it is something that a woman could do at home without a doctor being present, without needing any oversight whatsoever. So this is something that obviously is drastically different to what abortion, the, the authors of abortion laws generally had in mind when they were writing laws, you know, often in the 1960s or the 1970s in some countries. So abortion, even without a medical practitioner's oversight, can be extremely safe and effective. And women, even in countries where abortion is illegal, know this well. So if you look at Northern Ireland, for example, it is extremely common for women who need an abortion to access these two drugs, mifepristone and misoprostol, usually on the internet, so they can have a clandestine abortion you know, in the privacy of their own homes. The problem for many women in other parts of the world is that they're not necessarily able to access these medications. So mifepristone is the one that's really the problem here. It doesn't have many uses other than abortion. So in many countries, it's simply just not available. Often this is due to rules about drug registration. It can be quite expensive for pharmaceutical companies to register a drug for use in a given country. Therefore, there's not really much incentive for pharmaceutical companies to actually do this, meaning mifepristone just might not be available in that country. Obviously, criminalization also has a big impact. But even in countries where abortion is completely legal, that doesn't mean that services are accessible. I mean, you can imagine if you live in a rural area, your nearest abortion clinic could be 200 miles away, 400 miles away. This is the only place you can get this drug, mifepristone. You know, what else have you got going on, on in your life? Are you even able to make that journey? What kind of personal cost does that have to you? So what many women will do instead is just take the drug misoprostol on its own. Misoprostol is much easier to access. It's licensed for other uses than abortion. Um, so it's possible to buy it over the counter, often just at a pharmacy, and just say that you're using it for something else, potentially. However, the problem with misoprostol, while it is completely safe to be used on its own, it is far less effective than when it's used in combination with mifepristone. It has to be used in the first 49 days of pregnancy in order to be effective. Lots of women might not even know they're pregnant in the first 49 days of pregnancy, or if they do know they're pregnant within that time, they, that m still might not leave them enough time to actually figure out what they need to do how they're supposed to access this medication. However, there is an alternative to this. So increasingly, there are organizations springing up on the internet which are able to ship both drugs, mifepristone and misoprostol, ship them worldwide to any woman who needs an abortion. 
So organizations like the group Women on Web, for example, it's a, an organization based in Canada. And what they do, if any woman approaches them saying she needs an abortion, but she's not able to access one in her country, they will do a brief medical assessment with her, maybe over the phone, or maybe have her fill in a form. And then they can discreetly ship out this medication to wherever she is. So this is a completely safe service. It is vitally needed for all the reasons I've said. All of these countries where abortion is illegal or not really available. You know, the infrastructure is there to provide medication, this medication to women who need it. So what I'm here today to, to say is really to urge humanitarian organizations and anyone with a bit of money to spare, obviously, to fund these types of organizations. They are providing a service that is desperately needed. It is safe. It is extremely effective. Give them money. Thank you very much.